Hi everybody, this is our activity on electrical energy and really this is just an extension of the last activity we did to give you the more modern variants of it. Um, but I've got here just a simple little electric motor with a fan on it and in order to get this motor to work, we need electrons to run through these wires because that's what electricity is, it's really the moving electrons. And last time out, we learned a couple of different ways we can get these moving electrons. Now, a key thing for today's lesson, it goes back to this. And these are these types of energy. We never really can make any kind of energy. We need to transform it from something else. So we never get something for nothing. And so we love electrical energy as people. We transform a lot of it. And the reason we like it so much is in one step, electrical energy can be turned into thermal energy in your stove, your toaster, your oven, your house. It can be turned into radiant energy in your lights uh, and the like. And it can be turned into motion energy in your garage door openers or in your cars. So one step gives us all these different kinds of energies we love to consume as people. But just like we need electricity often to get a light bulb to work, your house to heat up, or your garage door open to open, we got to get one of these to transform into this. And that was our last lesson. So that's what we're gonna just be talking more about today. And the first way that we figured out we could do that was by using a, making a battery. Now a battery we found out that you can make from like fruits, anything with an acid in it, and then a couple of specific metals, copper and zinc. And when you put copper and zinc in an acid environment, it all of a sudden makes some electrons move around within this system and it makes them move chemically. And what it does is it basically, this is a very simplistic version, but it basically makes the electrons in here all collect on one of these posts and they get crowded in there and they don't like to be there. And this would be right now like a brand new battery. A battery is obviously the modern version of this simple thing. We've known about batteries for a long time. The first people that made batteries didn't even know they'd made a battery, uh, and it took frog legs to figure that out, and I'll let you uh, research that to figure out what the heck frog legs has to do with this. At any rate, though, now we've moved some electrons through a chemistry. So we have gone from chemical energy to electrical energy. And once we have these electrons where they don't want to be, if we give them a path to kind of get home, so to speak, and that path would be a wire, and it would basically make kind of a little electron highway where these electrons can start going home, so to speak. And if we put any kind of a device in the path of these electrons, like a light, well, then those electrons will do some work and they'll make a light. So here would be how the light in your phone essentially works because your phone has a battery. And you'll also notice on batteries that they've got a little plus sign on one side, a little negative on the other. And those basically mean this, the negative side of the battery when your battery's new, you can kind of think of as the spot on the battery that's got all these electrons packed together that don't wanna be there. Well. Eventually, all these electrons find their way home and they don't want to move anymore. And when the electrons in the system don't want to move anymore, you've got a dead battery, okay? And batteries are very, very nice because they can do work for us. And I can attach this battery to this fan and as soon as I touch the ends, the electrons start to flow. And when the electrons start to flow, my fan goes on. Now batteries are really, really nice because I really don't have to do any work with the battery. It just goes and does what I want. You don't have to do any work with your phone or anything like that. The problem with it is, is eventually that's gonna die. And then our battery's dead and we gotta go get a new battery or if we have a rechargeable battery, we can recharge it. But we've gotta do something to get the electrons so they wanna move again. And that was one way that we did it and that was converting chemical, uh, chemical energy 
into electrical energy, transforming. And the other way was this other funny method that we saw that Michael Faraday discovered. And remember in our last video, they had the coils of copper wire. I'm going to say that this Sharpie is a magnet. And when we move that magnet through those copper wires in the last demonstration, you could see the needle move, which showed and detected moving electrons. So this is another way to get electrons to move. But instead of using chemical to get those electrons to move, like we did in the battery, now we're using motion to make those. And the modern variant, we know the modern, uh, the modern variant of our uh, lemon battery is a regular battery. Well, the common variant of this, even though Michael Faraday discovered it, and this motion method is called the Faraday method, he didn't really put it to work. That took another great scientist named Nikolai Tesla, and he developed one of these, which are essential to life as we know it right now. This is a generator. And the generator, if you look inside here, I hope it will show up on the movie, you can see some copper windings in there, and that's that version of this. The thing that you can't see but's there is this whole housing here is a big magnet. And when we make either the copper move or the magnets move, it doesn't matter, as soon as they're moving, we start producing electricity. And that's how a generator works. Now I've got, I don't want to use this because it's big and bulky, I'm going to use a more friendly version of this, which is a little hand generator right here. And the little hand generator has the same parts as the big generator. It's got magnets and copper and something to make things spin. And so now, when I hook these two up like this, nothing happens because there's no electricity being transformed until this starts moving. And the minute I spin that, now we've got electrical current and that fan starts and it moves and it will move as long as I spin this. And obviously the nice part of this is unlike the battery, I'm not going to run out of my electrical current. The bad part is, is I got to work the whole time. And that's the bad part of this. The other good part of this that isn't really shown here is this kind of, of electric, electrical production can make a lot of electricity. Big, big industrial portions. You'll notice that we generally, I guess it's not true so much in cars, but most of the things we associate with working with batteries are small things that generally don't take a lot of energy. If you're gonna use a battery like a car, batteries are much, much bigger um, so and much less portable. All the elect things that work off your in your house that plug into things, they use this kind of electricity. This is the Faraday method or induction electricity. And our next lesson that we're going to do is how we produce this in gigantic amounts for our houses. But these are again are just the two basic forms of uh, transforming things into electricity. Again, the battery transforms chemical energy into electrical energy, and the Faraday method, which is this kind of thing, which uses generators, that transforms motion energy into electrical, but we all, we never get, we never make any kind of energy. If we want a kind of energy, like electrical energy, which we want a lot of, it's got to be quote unquote made, but it's really transformed from one of these other types of energy. Thanks for watching.